Welcome to Trinity United Church in Edmonton. Today is Sunday, March 28th, and it is Palm Sunday. I don't have any palm branches with which to decorate or to wave, but uh, we celebrate Palm Sunday nonetheless. Today we will be celebrating communion as well. And so if you'd like to stop this video and get the bread and the wine or juice that you would like to have for the service, now is a good time to do that. That will be later in the service and you are certainly welcome to join in that sacrament. Let us pray. Great God, hope of all the ages, you command the rise and fall of nations, yet you draw close to the powerless. You make a new future among those who trust your way. On this day, Lord Jesus, we join in praise with all of your disciples of all nations. You alone know the road ahead and all that it will require of us as we enter this holy week. Let your tears wash over us. Cleanse us of our fears. Heal us in broken places. Renew us where hope has died. Blessed are you, Jesus, our joy, our peace, our hope. Amen. And as is our practice, our custom, we light our Christ light, a sign that Christ is among us and is in the space between us and is within us. Let us sing. reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? 
They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God. This is a very strange time in which we're living. Now, how many times have you heard that? Of course, we've heard that so many times, but it's true, it's true. On one hand, on the one hand, we have a feeling of, of hope and of looking forward. After all, the vaccines for which we have been waiting so long are starting to roll out, and more and more people are getting that protection. That's terrific. It's not without its hiccups, and we all know there have been some interruptions. In some jurisdictions, the method of, of getting an appointment is frustrating. Uh, some people also feel that they'd like to be able to put their name on the list sooner than what they can understand all that. But nonetheless, there's a feeling of optimism. Looking forward, we're seeing some progress. On the other hand, there are still anxious hearts and worried souls. The case numbers in our province, we're seeing them start to rise again. And the cases of variants are a real worrisome thing, especially in this province. Really concerned about that. And then in other matters that are not pandemic related, there's also still plenty of worry. There have been race-related attacks on vulnerable citizens. There have been mass shootings, in the plural, in the last week in the United States. 
Russia is starting to flex its muscles. China is starting to flex its muscles. There are other global crises that we have heard about, and there are other global crises that we just don't hear about. And then there's climate change, and then there's economic recession, and then, and then. So we can move from, from joy to sorrow in the blink of an eye. We can go from pleased and happy to crushing worry in but a moment. From hope to disappointment, and from disappointment to hope. Today is Palm Sunday, and it's as though we have been living the very emotions of Palm Sunday. It's not just because of the events of the last week or month or even several months. In one way or another, we've been living this roller coaster of emotions for quite some time. Maybe that's part of our human nature. I don't want to speculate too much on that. I do know, I will say, that we can feel it now. We can feel that roller coaster of emotions. Hope, disappointment, disappointment, hope. And Palm Sunday is all about that roller coaster of emotions. It's about the highs and lows of expectation and disappointment. What do you think of when you think of Palm Sunday? Now, if you've been in the church, you might have some history of celebrating Palm Sunday year after year, the Sunday before Easter. Do you think of those palm branches that we wave in the church that we get from somewhere? We don't have palm trees around here, but there are suppliers who bring them in, oftentimes from overseas somewhere. And sometimes they're even fair trade operators who harvest them, of course, well in advance of Palm Sunday, so that they have time for shipping and distribution. Did you ever take time to fold those little palm fronds into um, palm crosses? I never figured that out. I never, but I know I've seen I've seen instructions for doing that. So I probably could do it if I put my mind to it. How about parades? Up and down the church aisle. I'm sitting right beside the aisle here, and I remember us having parades on Palm Sunday, up and down the aisle with children and, well, getting all ages involved, up and down the aisle while we sing a, a wonderful hymn of hosannas. And some places will even go outside. It's often still kind of winter when Palm Sunday hits our areas, but if it's not quite so winter, we could go around the church and walk around the church building or even up and down the street and singing those songs of Hosanna. Well, it all sounds so triumphant and exciting and high intensity. But Hosanna, Hosanna, the word Hosanna, is not a cry that's shouted in praise or jubilation. Now, because it's not our language, we probably don't get this, but it's true. Hosanna actually comes from the other side of that roller coaster of emotions. Save us. Save us now, for we are desperate. Save us. That's what Hosanna means. There's trouble. There's misery. Come into the city, Jesus, and save us. That's what people were shouting in that story of Palm Sunday. From what we know, and there's a lot that we know and a lot that we still don't really know for sure, but from what we know, there probably were two parades happening that day in Jerusalem. On one side of the city, 
a small back entrance to the uh, to the city, a back door, if you will, to the walled city of Jerusalem. Jesus entered with a donkey and palm branches cut off of the local trees and ordinary folk lining the streets to see him and to, to cheer him on, to see him go into the city. But on the other side of the city, the main gates, the big, impressive, large gates of the city, the Roman governor was coming in with much fanfare and busyness and activity. And it wasn't just a friendly visit. It was Passover time in Jerusalem. And the citizens of Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem, took the time in Passover to remember their history. They remembered their history and the stories of being slaves in Egypt and winning their freedom and leaving their oppressive slave masters in Egypt, taking hold of their own freedom and leaving slavery. Well, the Roman governor was not prepared to have people remember such a history as that without being there and showing the full force of Rome. Think about the implications of just where that's coming from. Talk about contrasts, though. Talk about contrasts between these two parades. The governor, the governor's all about a display of power and authority, power over others, keeping people in their place, making the subjects the subjects of the empire do what they wanted them to do. Jesus, on the other hand, was about welcoming and being with the people. Jesus was about a power that's like walking along beside them, a whole different kind of power. Jesus was about empowering them, others, and doing what's needed even if it comes to sacrifice. So talk about a contrast. Some people suggest that's just the point of why Jesus did that parade into the city. So where does this leave us? Palm Sunday is a day of contrasts, and it's the beginning of our Holy Week. That's a time when, when those contrasts maybe come into better focus for us. They could also just leave us more confused. Who will we watch? Which parade should we follow? Because there will be times in our lives, times in our memory, times in our viewing, when it seems like the governor's parade is the one that we should be watching. They used to say about the Roman Empire, in spite of all that they did, in spite of everything else, at least they got the water flowing and they got the roads built and paved. And say what you want about the ancient Roman Empire, some of those roads and some of those aqueducts are still standing and the roads are still in use. There will be times when it seems like the governor's parade is the one we should follow. But we put our trust and we put our hope in Jesus' parade. It's a ragtag parade from the back of the city it's a parade that reaches out to be with the people, people like you and me. It's the parade of a God who stays with us. 
in the back streets of the cities of the empire. The other parade, that other parade at the front of the city, it comes along and then it's gone. It makes its empty promises, or maybe more likely makes its threats, because that's how that kind of power works. But Jesus' parade, Jesus' parade knows why we cry out to it. Why we cry out, save us, save us now. Hosanna, save us. Jesus' parade understands that roller coaster of expectations. Jesus' parade is with the broken hearts that yearn for something more. Here, Jesus, here are the up and down emotions of our hopes and disappointments. Here are the dreams and the worries that make us uncertain. Here are the cries for help. We know that you take them with you. Take them again as we walk along into Holy Week. Amen. continued and your continuing support of Trinity United Church and of the United Church of Canada through your gifts, tithes and offerings to this congregation and to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church. Your gifts of money make a big difference. Holy God, you come to us in Jesus, a poor man riding on a donkey, and we thank you for this witness of the power of love in spite of the powers of the world. We thank you for all who have withstood evil, who have suffered the jeers and worse of the crowds, who have been tormented, even put to death, and still refuse to use the weapons of hatred. We thank you for the times when we have been able to let go our defenses to give up control and to live with open hands and open hearts. We thank you with hosannas, with joy in our hearts, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our own beloved. Amen. 
as we come to the table, as we prepare our hearts for the supper which is for all, the supper and the meal which is at Christ's table today, not my table, not the table of this congregation. It is Christ's table and all who seek to follow the ways of Jesus, who seek to follow the ways of love in this world, are welcome at this table. And as we prepare our hearts for this meal, let us say a statement of our faith in our creed of our United Church. A new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. All are welcome at Christ's table. Living and loving God, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude and joy for all of your gifts to us. You made us in your own image and you set us in this creation. In your great love, you delivered your people of old from slavery and have delivered us from the power of evil and death through the sacrificial, sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. We praise and honor you, holy God. Heaven and earth are surely full of your glory. Blessed is the one whose supper we share this day. Blessed are we, renewed by his life. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that the hour had come, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he washed the disciples' feet and gave them a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. He took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Be present, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, as you were in that upper room with your disciples when you shared this last supper with them. Make yourself known to us as we share among us scattered though we are, gathered as we can be, as we share this bread and this cup, 
your life in us. Amen. And we say Jesus' prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, given in love for all. This is the blood of Christ, poured out in love for all. I invite you, take and receive of these God's gifts. And after you have received, let us pray. Pray with me. O oh God, in Jesus Christ, you triumphantly entered Jerusalem, thus beginning a week of pain and sorrow. In these days of defeat and victory, you have brought together humiliation and exaltation, death and resurrection. Be with us now as we follow in joy and in song the way of the cross in the footsteps of Jesus our Savior. Amen. We sing. Yet with glory, seek Hosanna to. 
thank you for joining us in this online presence of Trinity United Church, celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion on this Palm Sunday in the year 2021. Hear these words as you move from this time of worship into this Holy Week. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <laughs> 